It's a guy jeans podcast. I recently had the pleasure of sitting down with members of the band Johnny Knows No One. And that's Johnny Rutherford who plays the bass, Doug Johnson who plays the drums, and Doug Zilmer on guitar. I asked them individually how they got into playing their instruments when they were younger and why they keep playing music after all these years. We talk about how the band got started, bands that influenced them back in the day, and some modern bands that they listen to now. We talk about other legendary bands of the Ventura, California music scene, as well as the iconic music house, Charlie's by the Sea, and all the bands that came out of that club. If you've been to one of their shows, you probably left there dripping in sweat from dancing through their entire set of great songs from past memories, I know I have. This band brings smiles, happiness, and good times wherever they play, and you're sure to boogie down whenever they play. You can catch them playing this Wednesday, November 22nd, the night before Thanksgiving annual party at Tony's Pizzeria in Ventura at 6 p.m., and my band just happens to be playing the Stoneflies as well. This is my 88th episode of this podcast, and I feel so honored to be able to sit down and talk to gifted people that I normally would not get the time to get to know or talk to or even hear their amazing stories and I want to thank you guys for listening and making it possible to do these podcasts so sit back drive work recreate whatever you might be doing and enjoy this podcast with my friends from the band Johnny Knows No One hey you guys welcome to the podcast I'm your host Guy Jeans and I'm here and honored to be with a really good band called Johnny Knows No One. I'm here with Doug Zilmer, Doug Johnson, and Johnny Rutherford. What's up, guys? How you doing, buddy? Hey, good to be here. So a couple of things I want to find out right off the bat is, um, you know, let's go a little history. You know, how long you guys been together? Who wants that one? <laughs> uh, well, Johnny and I started the band in uh, 1984. Uh huh. Summer of '84. Um, Doug joined the band about five years later, I think. So wait, you did, you graduated? You had graduated and then started the band. It was the summer after '84. I was playing in a quote unquote different band, and yeah. um, Johnny and a couple other guys came over and kind we, of stole me from the other band. We kidnapped him. Nice. Yeah. Were you guys? Who was any of you guys playing in the funnels? That was me. Uh huh. Yes. Doug Johnson, the drummer. And you were, were you drumming? Yeah. Who was in that band? Tom Atmore and Jimmy Richards. And then uh, we had Tina Cummings, who's yeah. now singing with Johnny Knows No One. Yep. Um, we had her singing. And uh, we had a couple other people kind of come in and out, but that was the main. Who was the thing. keyboard player, a piano player in that band? Uh, was it was just a trio once in a while. Oh, Jimmy oh, okay. uh, w- would play keys. Uh-huh. Um, in fact, I think uh, every once in a while, Tina would um, play keys. Was, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we didn't really have a dedicated keyboard player. Those guys pl- both played bass and guitar, Tom and Jim, and they switched off. And, and would you guys, did you guys do originals? Uh, we funnels? did some, but we yeah. were mostly playing covers. You know, yeah. a lot of the same stuff that we do with Johnny's no, Nose No One. Okay. You know, yeah, you guys, you guys had a pretty good name back in the day, man. I remember uh, you guys played probably a couple of high school dances, maybe, or. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, we got in a little trouble at one. Did you? Um, a Boyna One or Ventura you know, One? Uh, a Boyna One. <laughs> they, um, we had played there a couple of times and inevitably people would start slamming. Uh-huh. So we had to uh, sign on our contract that we would stop playing, even if we were in the middle of a song, when people were slamming. Uh-huh. <laughs> so we did that like seven times. And then finally, Atmore told all the guys that kept slamming, he said, look, if you guys just go to the back of the gym where we can't see you, we'll keep playing. Uh-huh. <laughs> so they go to the back of the gym and we can tell they're slamming back there. And we just kept on playing. Well, um, it got a little out of control, and Miss Frucci tried yeah. to break it up, and oh, somehow yeah. she got pushed and fell on the ground. And somebody. I think I was there. <laughs> whose initials were DM, <laughs> jumped on her and kind of mounted her. 
Oh, no. Uh, and then jumped <laughs> off and <laughs> ran into the crowd. Oh, my God. So, so the next year, um, Tom and I had another band, The Tremors, with Chris Brenner and Larry Buin. Oh, okay. And we were going to play there, and I had to go in and talk with Miss Frucci face to face. Oh, my God. And she said, so I hear um, a couple of your members of The Tremors formerly played in the funnels. Is that true? <laughs> And I, I'm doing everything I can to not laugh. And I said, yeah. And she said, well, you know, last year we, we had some problems. <laughs> and I said, yeah, that was that was really bad. So we had to sign another contract that they wouldn't slam. <laughs> Chris, Chris, is it Chris Brenner? Yeah. He, he was a keyboard player, right? Yeah. That dude was a talented guy, man. Oh, my yeah. gosh. What's he, he, what's he doing these days? He uh, he's been like the the music director for um, Mila Djovovich or something like that. Y- yeah, um, Mila Djovovich. Yeah, um, she's an actress and a mu- musician. Yeah, she was a musician first, I believe. Awesome. Yeah, I haven't talked to him in decades. Yeah, I haven't either, man. Yeah. I haven't seen great, him. Great, great songwriter. I yeah. mean, the first time I heard him play piano and start playing his own tunes, I'm like, I want to be in a band with you, man. Yeah, he was he was a talented dude. I remember being up in Ohio at a party and he was just playing. the piano when everybody was just tripping on him how good he was and stuff it was cool oh yeah so yeah. the people that aren't here from your guys band johnny knows no one um joe hamilton and tina cummings uh, who who's on vocals doug johnson uh plays drums doug zilmer plays guitar johnny plays bass and um how did the did this the name of the band come from associated with you somehow how did that go down yeah. well we were at uh, ventura college and which I didn't go to. I mean, I was enrolled, but uh, <laughs> like all of us, yeah. <laughs> uh, we were sitting around, and uh, there was Brian Turner. I don't know if you remember Brian Turner, yeah. Big BT. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we were sitting around, and everyone was talking about people, and and uh, I said, "Who is that? I don't know that person." And and Brian said, "Johnny, you know no one. Johnny knows no one." <laughs> and that's where it came from. It just yeah. kind of stuck. But our first name was, uh, I think, it was Hit and Run. Oh, was it? God, it's a terrible name, but yeah. So we we adopted Johnny Knows No One, and it's been Johnny Knows No One Great ever name. since. Great yeah. name. Well, it was four dollar haircut for about a week. That was the name. <laughs> so, how, did you start the band, and you came on in, and then you asked Doug, or how did that all go down with you guys? I'm really interested to hear that. Well, like Doug said, Doug Zilmer, uh, we kind of stole him from another band, uh-huh. and then there was Kenny Taylor. Okay. Uh, and Larry Bubin, he was our drummer originally. It was Larry Bubin, Kenny Taylor, Doug Zilmer, and myself. And and Gerald Cushman. Oh, that, that's right. Gerald Cushman sang, too. I forgot. <laughs> God, it's been so long. And yeah. uh, we started, like I said, 1984. Mm-hmm. And I think Kenny went away to school. He went away to college. And... Uh, then I became the bass player full time. I used to play guitar in the band, and okay. then I became the, the bass player full time. Yeah. And uh, and then Larry left at one point. I don't know the year. And we got a kid from uh, Santa Paula, Matt Novak, uh, to play drums for us. And then Doug Zilmer, he went away to Cal Poly. So I had we had to find someone else, and we found Kurt Crandall, who played guitar, and we were playing Charlie's. Before Doug left, we were playing Charlie's on Tuesday nights. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Frank's band, uh, The Strangers. Yeah. And then Durango 95. They played Monday night. We played Tuesday night. And you guys were, it was Johnny Knows No One? It was Johnny okay. Knows No One. Yeah, yeah. And shit, oops, sorry. Most oh, of okay. our friends yeah. couldn't get in. Yeah. So they hung out at the big window there oh, at Charlie's. Course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. What a what a great place to have for oh, Charlie's all of us great. musicians, yeah. right? Great that was place. an amazing place. How, yeah. how many how many gigs have you done there, Doug? Oh my gosh! Yeah, amazing. Yeah, a lot. That place was so fun. Yeah. It was because they, as time went on, they were just having original bands, mm-hmm. young original bands, kind of garagey original bands, and that was the creative hub for Ventura. Yeah, for it was. the for the the young people, all the artists hung out there. It was just such a great hang. Yeah, totally miss it. Everyone that went there misses it. Did you guys play parties like like college parties or whatever before you guys w- started playing at the club and stuff like that? 
Is that yeah, how it went we, down? we used to play all parties like every weekend when we were all at BC and, you know, just. Like, just, where, where were you guys playing at? Like in Ondolando and all over the place, wherever? We did. I think we played Ondolando, but just all over Ventura. I mean, yeah, yeah. over by Buena High School, sure. um, by the college, just whoever had a house and wanted a party, we were there. So, yeah. yeah. And cops would never come. Like, they, would, they wouldn't show up till like 12. You guys got to stop now. And they would leave. And then and you'd start up you again. Know, you start up again. They, they, they come back and they say, you know, if you guys keep playing, we're going to take your equipment or whatever. The rules but, have kind of changed nowadays, huh? Mm-hmm. Like, you, you can't do that anymore. The kids can't do that, huh? Hell no. It's poor they, kids. You know, they can't they get fined or something, or the, the parents get fined if they have a party or something, I heard, in yeah. Ventura. And all the other neighbors freak out. Yeah. And we used to play at people's condos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and we weren't quiet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm embarrassed to say that the first time I, I, I guess I was gigging too, you know, I must've been playing and doing my thing with uh, my, my different bands and stuff. But I'm embarrassed to say the first time I saw you guys was up at Eric Allison's party. Oh wow! And that's the first time I ever saw you guys. <laughs> and I was blown away. And I was like, I was telling Kelly, who was with me. I'm like, these guys are badass you know it was fun you guys were doing kind of like a little unplug yeah it was, session a, it was in, a, in the, an acoustic set yeah because the, you were playing the cajon i think <laughs> were you, or weren't you yep yeah and and uh, you guys were just jamming man it sounded killer yeah. that well, was fun we, huh? we were set to play a, yeah. a full full-on gig there yeah but because of the winds and they were afraid of the fires coming back yeah so we we had to play an acoustic set and it turned out well. It turned out fun. It was fun. Yeah. I and think I was hammered that night, but it turned out well. I think everybody yeah. was. Yeah, since since we didn't think we were going to play, we thought it was canceled, we kind of started drinking. <laughs> and then we got talked into doing the acoustic thing. And yeah. I think I remember even maybe telling you, like, I've, I'm, I've never been this hammered playing <laughs> guitar before. It sounded great, yeah. man. It was fun. I was sober. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were totally entertaining. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, your guys' musical background. And I know uh, Doug Johnson's got a musical background, and I want to hear about everybody's musical background. Let's start with Doug Johnson. You know, when did you start playing drums, and, and how, did that, how did that all go down? Did you get your first kit when you were a real, real little kid? Uh, no. Um, I love music out of the womb. My mom said I learned how to operate the, uh, the, the turntable before I learned how to turn the TV on. I just gravitated toward it. Um, yeah. uh, I, I think I, I took some piano lessons. Uh, I took some guitar lessons, but um, then I fell in love with the drums. And uh, I think I was 13 and Christmas was coming up and I put drum set on my list. Well, what my parents gave me a little practice pad and yeah. two drumsticks. You hit the hell out of that and, thing. Didn't uh, you? Yeah. I had to prove myself. <laughs> so the next summer, they put me in drum lessons just on my practice pad, mm-hmm. and uh, I worked my butt off. And uh, the next September, my 14th birthday, they surprised me with a CB700 drum set. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I earned it, and I think I, they were convinced that I was going to stick with it and that I was going to work at it and actually practice, and um, I loved it. And it's funny, when you actually love yeah. uh, practicing, yeah. then... Um, then people, you know, you really love your instrument, yeah. and uh, that that was apparent. So, um, yeah, I've I've worked my butt off, practiced a lot. Um, the Funnels was my first band that actually played gigs, and that was great. It's like once you start playing gigs, all that practice you've been doing really comes together. Um, so then I I, uh, I studied music at VC, and then I did a year at Berkeley College of Music, which was um, just awesome i learned so much there uh i didn't didn't have the the funds to go back it was really expensive yeah it's totally um, expensive but still i mean just all that i learned just in one year not just about drumming but um about music in general theory Uh, and all kinds of stuff i'm sure and being surrounded like i lived with these two guys who were already world-class musicians it was just crazy how the talent there Mm -hmm. and uh yeah anyways um yeah I've, i've I think there was maybe two years that um, I didn't have a kit in my mm-hmm. whole life, but I've been playing ever since then, playing gigs, and I can't stop. I've tried to stop. We talked about, you know, I was I was watching you put you guys play at Tony's Pizza the last time, and I was talking to you about how you hold your your sticks, you know, and the, which is 
you know, you see really good drummers playing like that. You know, um, it's kind of like this, right? Traditional grip. Yeah, tra tra traditional grip. And did you learn that um, when you were when you were little, and you've always played that way, or? Yeah, uh, I was taught that. Um, I I played traditional for about. I think the uh, my first year, mm -hmm. and then I switched to match grip, and Which then. Is like yeah, okay. where your hands look, yeah. both hands are holding the same. Okay. And then um, I was really getting in into um, trying to develop left hand independence, mm -hmm. and you know doing all these things like you know yeah. eating with my left hand and <laughs> answering really? the phone, and uh -huh. and uh, it just wasn't happening. But then I started playing traditional grip again, and uh, all of a sudden I started getting this independence, and I just I think what it was is that. All of a sudden, my left hand was no longer the little brother that was like always two steps behind the big brother. It yeah. was like he had his own thing now and it was developing his own personality. Yeah, yeah. And it, instead of trying to emulate whatever the right hand was, was doing, my left hand was now, hey, look, dude, I can do this and you can't. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I just my uh, left hand independence started kind of flourishing. And so I stuck with it. And I, th I think it's funner. I like playing that way more. I don't know why. I just think it's more fun to play like that. Yeah, it looks cool, too, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. So you play with, like, all kinds of bands in Ventura, too, right? Or you used to. Yeah. Yeah, and you're kind of like the guy they would call up if somebody did, couldn't make it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty good at last-minute situations. Dude, that's like kind of a, you know, that, that gives you, I mean, it says a lot about, you know, how good of a drummer you are if they're just calling you up and, you know, putting you in there last minute, you know, just to be able to figure that out like that fast you know yeah well, sometimes it works out well yeah. especially with um seasoned musicians uh -huh. who uh are used to doing that as opposed to what i would call band musicians that only play in like their band and have to rehearse yeah the the guys that are gigging all the time they're like okay dude uh 12 bars you know uh quick four and we're gonna break on uh you know on the quick four okay shuffle yeah and then they'll count it in at the tempo they actually want to play the song in, and everything's fine. Yeah. And it's um, about a lot of it's feel, too, I'm sure. Yeah. Trying to feel where they're going yeah. and stuff, yeah. It's communication, and, yeah. and uh, I think there's a certain amount of musical intuition that goes on also. Did you take band at, like, any, like junior high or anything? Um, I played in the jazz band uh -huh. at Buena High my senior year. Okay. Um, uh, I also did a year of music school at Long Beach State. Oh, God, that was terrible, but... um. They made me play in the marching band. <laughs> oh, did they? <laughs> did you guys? Did you guys take band at one of, at the junior highs or anything? Not at all. Oh man, there, there's this uh, at, at Balboa, uh, Mr. Barnum. I don't know if you guys yes, ever mis met Mr. Barnum. I felt so bad for him, man. Like you know, he had to bring in all these kids that never had played instruments before. You know, like, and he was like. You know, okay, and everybody had their instruments, the oboes, the flutes, the saxophones, the tubas, the baritones, the drummers, you know, on their little snare, the timp timpani players, you know. Okay, you guys, here we go. Ready, all right, one, two. And he was like, and he would just put his hands on his ears, just like, oh my God. He was just so, it was so bad. It felt so bad for him. I mean, you got to have some serious patience, you oh, know, yeah, for kids yeah. like that. You he know? was the nicest guy, too. He was, he man. He went down the street and he yeah. always was walking up the street, you know, yeah. super yeah. nice guy, Mr. Yeah. Barnum. Yeah. He was the organist at my church. Yeah. Oh, was he? Yeah, yeah, he was on it. He's a shredder, man. He could play every instrument. What did you do in band? I played, um, I started out on the oboe, uh -huh. and then I uh, started, and then I started playing the baritone. And then they bumped me up to uh, the advanced uh, uh, band, and I was, you know, a little seventh grader up in with the ninth graders. I was kind of tripping. The thing about the baritone is the ones at, at Balboa, they leaked. And so the, the spit and everything would get all over your hands and all over your clothes. And I'd it stink, man. And I'd go into like Spanish class and the girls would be like, what's that smell? And I'm just like, so I tried to cover it up with Brute 33 you know, my locker and made it even worse, man. <laughs> but anyways, I stopped playing um, the baritone because of that and uh, went back to the oboe, you know, which was cool. But uh, you guys, did you guys ever do that? Mm -mm. You no? Know? Yep. What about you, Johnny? Did you? How did you start your musical endeavors? Well, we had a lot of music in our house growing up as a kid. My dad, he uh, played guitar, wrote songs. He was a really good songwriter. And 
Uh, I got a guitar, I think it was like 13, maybe 12. No, I think it was 13. And the only thing I wanted to do was learn how to play Stairway to Heaven. For sure, yeah. Yeah, that's the only yeah. thing I wanted to do. And every, I took, every. I went to Heck Music and took lessons there. And once uh, my parents, I played Stairway to Heaven to them, and uh, they said, okay, this is costing way too much to learn one song, so you're done. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. No, but I just, you know, friends, Scott Knight, who lived in this neighborhood, you know Scott? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he played guitar, and I'd get together with him and, and other guys in the neighborhood, and we just, you know, we jam. Yeah. And, uh, but music was always going at our, at our house, you know, Willie Nelson, yeah. stuff like that, way back when. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I just... I just learned on my own, mm -hmm. uh, no, no formal teaching really at all. And, um, a lot by ear. Huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then when I met Doug and all the other guys, you know, it just, we started playing all the time. Uh -huh. And, uh, like I said, when Kenny left, I became the bass player. So I still play a little guitar, not a lot, mm -hmm. but in the band, it's strictly bass. And you're singing as well, right? Yeah. You, yeah. Do, do you do most of the singing? And then uh, Tina does some too. Tina does, yeah. We have, yeah. A, yeah. Tina does some singing. She does a lot of backup. Doug sings yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Joe, he sings a few songs. Okay. Yeah. So we That's spread fun. it around, but I think yeah. most of the songs uh, I sing, uh -huh. and I don't know all the words, so <laughs> don't pay attention when I'm singing. Dude, I'm the same way, yeah, man. I, I make it up as I go sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just the way it is. <laughs> How can you remember <laughs> lyrics to all those songs? It's right. just, yeah. it's, it's too hard. Yeah. Uh huh. But what about you, Zilmer? Yeah, so similar to Johnny, um, <clears throat> you know, and Doug, I've, I, um, I think I was born loving music, you know, yeah. and just always loved music and always had an ear for it. Um, fell in love with guitar very early, but didn't start playing until I was 12. Took lessons at Heck Music, just like Johnny, and um, for about a year. And then I'm like, okay, I'm good. I just... I had a really good ear for picking out songs, so I just like I'm I'm good. I just want to go learn how to play songs, and so that's what I did. I just started picking songs out and just playing. Didn't play in a band at all until we started Johnny Knows No One um, in '84. But um, that's it. I mean, yeah. and I've never played in another band. It's always been you know me and Johnny and and Doug for yeah since 1989 doug i think so uh, something like that yeah and doug and i have known each other since we were like five or six years old so oh, yeah. yeah we go way back and johnny and i since balboa so um but i love i mean i just love music i love any kind of music yeah yeah i, I love it I'll, I'll listen to anything i'll get something from everything so yeah it's um yeah that's it just love playing guitar and learning songs let's talk about um practice like when you guys were first uh, individually, like how many, how much would you guys practice? And was that like, just, was that like a dedication that you guys did like every day for a couple hours? Was it like just in your soul that you had, like, I'm going to get off work and I'm going to go play my guitar or whatever. Was it like one of those kind of deals or were you, were you, were you inspired by other things? Start, start with you, Doug Johnson. Uh, gosh, yeah, I practiced a lot. I yeah. think I, uh, I think I took three and a half years of lessons straight when I first started mm -hmm. and I, I was diligent. I would practice, uh, an hour or two just about every day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it wasn't long until I was playing in a band that was playing around a lot. So sometimes I'd be practicing and then rehearsing and then practicing and then gigging. Yeah. But yeah, I, I was diligent. Uh-huh. So yeah, hours for like for many years, you think, uh, are you still doing that? Are you still practicing as much as you were? Or? Yeah. I just, I don't have, I'm working so much right now. Yeah. I, I don't have the time, but, um, gosh, I, so earlier I said, I went to after Berkeley, um, a couple of years after that, I went to Long Beach state and I was in their music program and that lasted about a year and eight weeks before I just quit. And I came home and uh, I was working little odd jobs here and there, but I was practicing um, eight hours a day. Like yeah. uh, one week I'd practice um, eight hours a day, four days, and then six hours the last day. And then I would play gigs that weekend. And then the next week I would take a break. I would just uh, practice eight hours, three days in a row. And then the fourth day I would do six hours. And 
Yeah. I was hardcore for, for a long time. Yeah, yeah. What about, what about you, Johnny? Well, I always had a guitar around. Yeah. Uh, even, you know, just watching TV when I was young with my parents, I'd always have a guitar in my hands, and I'd just be, you know, muffling it so I wouldn't bother them. But in my room, always playing. Yeah. I mean, it it was every day, you know, yeah. I'd come home from school and I'd pick up my guitar and I'd get in front of the stereo and play with, you know, different songs. Mm -hmm. uh, not to the extent of Doug, I wouldn't practice that much. But, but you're still, you. yeah, uh, I, I, it was, you know, playing. a couple yeah. hours a day, every yeah. day as a kid. Uh, now I just don't have the time. I just, yeah. you know, working and stuff. I just, yeah. you know, and I don't, I don't play guitar as much and I don't play guitar in the band. So, I'll I'll pick up the bass and then there's times where like the last time we played Tony's yeah. uh, what was that a month two months ago yeah I just picked up a guitar recently uh, I went you yeah. know that much time without playing at all yeah you pulled yeah. you pulled it off man yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's but awesome always always had a guitar in my hand yeah. as a kid for sure Silmer. yeah so back in the day I used to play all the time I would come home from school and. I couldn't get enough. I, I I just kept wanting to learn songs. I'd like try to pick out songs and listen to it and try and learn it. It was a like super cool feeling to kind of actually learn something, especially something a little difficult. Um, as time went on, I didn't practice as much. Nowadays, um, it's kind of love hate. I mean, I'll, I always have a guitar out. My acoustic guitar is always out. That's what I'll play. Sometimes I'm super inspired and mm -hmm. I feel like I'm playing really well. And sometimes I think I just totally suck and, <laughs> and yeah, just put it course. down and yeah. uh, <laughs> leave it there for a bit. But yeah. um, I always come back and I still love it. And um, I just, you know, I have too many guitars uh, more than I need. And I just, there's a reason for all of them. Yeah. And, um, most people don't know what that is. And, but yeah. if you're a guitar player, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, nowadays I don't practice that much. Um, if we have a gig coming up, then I'll, I'll, I'll play a lot. And then yeah. sometimes I'm like, okay guys, it's time to, time to learn some new songs. And so we'll figure those out and practice those. But yeah. Why are you guys still playing? That's a great question. Uh, well, I'll, I'll answer for me. I yeah. mean, yeah, I absolutely love it. I, mm -hmm. I, and I was thinking back, um, <clears throat> I didn't play in a band until this band, Johnny knows no one in 1984. And, um, the feeling of playing with other musicians and creating something that's way bigger than what you've been doing, you know, by yourself in your room was completely unexpected and awesome. Yeah. And it still is. Yeah, you know that's one reason why I don't really like practicing that much anymore because it's just not as much fun as like actually making music with with these guys. So that's why I still do it. It's a lot of work, like Doug said earlier. Yeah, <laughs> you know when we have a gig, take some practice. You know we're all busy, but um, if we didn't love it, we wouldn't still be doing it. And mm -hmm. We actually had a thirteen year break at one point. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. So. That's that's my point of view. Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> so why are you still why are you uh, still why like still, gigging? Yeah. Uh, uh, I I just love playing music with these guys. Yeah. You know? uh, I don't think I could play with anyone else. Doug and I have done it ever since we started, and I I did have another guitar player when he went to school to mm -hmm. college, and I hated it. Yeah. I hated it. It was. Because the guy didn't play like Doug. He, uh -huh. didn't, he it was just, he, he didn't play the music that we played. He was, I think he was like a heavy metal guy, guitarist uh -huh. player. Yeah. And I just, we were playing at Charlie's a couple times. I just, it was, it was work. Yeah. But you just can't quit me, Johnny. I just can't you quit know, you, Doug. <laughs> I, think that's a, I think that's a good point, you know, like finding, you know, bandmates that you can relate to, that oh. you're actually friends with. Yeah. That we and, have chemistry. I and mean, have a good time yeah. with. You know, it's really important. Yeah. When yeah. Doug was when Doug Johnson was playing in the funnels, I I would I'd get to sing a couple songs with those guys. Yeah. Way back when, and help do the sound and stuff, and and you know I've known these guys forever. So yeah. It's uh, it's just it's great to play with them. Yeah. Johnny, do you remember the first time we met? Hmm. Fill me in. <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> So I, I was, I think I was in 10th um, grade and you were going to Balboa. Yeah. 
And one of the guys in my neighborhood said, hey, I heard they're having a pickup football game over oh, at Water Maria. Yeah, yeah, it was raining. And so so we go down there and uh, divvy up these teams. And I'd never met you before. And uh, so I was on your team. And we started off with the ball. And the first play, you said, okay, I'm going to be quarterback. And you look at me and you said, you're going to go out. And you looked at, I think it was Kenny. And you said, you're going to go out. And here's the pattern you're going to run. And you turn your hand over, and there's two big warts on opposite sides of your hand. <laughs> and, and you look at me, and you say, Classic. you, you run 10 steps out, and then go right over to this wart. <laughs> and then you look at Kenny, and you say, 10 steps out, and then go to the left over to this wart. <laughs> and I was like, funny. okay, I like this guy. And, yeah. and no, I mean, I, I really was impressed. I was like... You know, this guy was three years younger than I, and he'd already risen to this level of sophistication that was <laughs> like even beyond me at that time. Uh, I was really impressed, yeah. Johnny. Wow. How, how about that time when we collected all the Christmas trees in your uh, station wagon? Oh, shoved like, what, 13 or 15 it, yeah. old Christmas trees in my station wagon? Yeah. What were you guys doing with those? Burning them. Took oh, them down to the beach. Oh, yeah, a big bonfire. Took, a, took them down to Waterbury Lane. Yeah, yeah. Piled awesome. them up. You could feel the heat from those. And it was an east windy day, so everything was safe. The, the wind was blowing out to the ocean. Man, I mean, we were, we were all standing like 100 feet away. Yeah. It was. Hey, yeah. So why are you still gigging? Uh, I can't live without it. Yeah. I've tried to. <laughs> I, I have to. Um, yeah. This band is always so fun to play because this yeah. is like my roots. Sure. I mean, I like playing all kinds of music. Yeah. But... This band is just the music is super fun, and mm -hmm. we've all known each other for so long. And people dance. Yeah, people dig it. There's nothing it's better than pure playing fun. when people are dancing. It's just yeah. there's this this thing, this energy that goes back and forth. Oh yeah, you know the people that are dancing, they're feeding off your energy, and it's this loop, and then their energy is coming back. It's just this like one. I don't know. It's just it's it's great. I think dancing is just so primitive uh, uh, for human beings and just connects us all. I can't, it's just so fun. I can't, I always look forward to it and seeing all these friends of mine out there on the dance floor. Oh my God. That's so fun. You know, no, all last about time, that. the last time you guys played it at Tony's was awesome, man. I was out there partying, dancing away <laughs> yeah. with everybody. And it was like, it's also like a big reunion. Yes, yeah, you know everybody that's there. You're like, oh my god, I haven't seen them since high school or yeah. whatever it is. That's you know? what we're hoping for. Oh, it's for gonna, Tony's. It's going to be raging next week, a week from tonight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hoping all these people come home and say, hey, it's a family. It's a like a high school reunion. For those that don't know, what kind of music are you guys playing? Johnny knows no one. I say late seventies, early eighties, new wave, fast yeah. and furious. You know, Joe Jackson, Jackson, Ramones. Yeah. Uh, romantics, plimsolls, plimsolls, yeah. 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 pretenders, yeah. blondie. It's like Pretend. stuff you can dance to. It's like rock, you know, rock stuff that wasn't top 40 or whatever, but everyone kind of knows it. And yeah. it's, it's just cool. You it's know, not cool worn out. Yet. It's not worn out yet. The first time I heard uh, Joe Jackson, it was at Elmhurst and I was in sixth grade <laughs> and it was like the look sharp. Uh -huh. And I was just like, oh, my God, you know, you, can you guys remember those days? Like mm -hmm. when you first heard those songs um, mm -hmm. or Elvis Costello, you know, you guys do any Elvis Costello? Yeah. One. Yeah. Which one did it pump it up? Mystery Dance. Oh, Mystery Dance. Um, yeah. Just uh, you guys remember that feeling of they, they don't make songs like that. Oh, anymore, no. Right. Nope. It, it was just such a breath of fresh air because yeah. it, it was so unrefined. Yeah. Do you remember when Devo came out? Oh my, I was, I was like, I think I was like seventh or eighth grade at Balboa and people were wearing those red hats, you know, the, um, planter hats or, or pots or whatever on their heads. Remember that? Yeah. Freedom of choice, man. Dude. And we were skateboard, um, in, at, on ramps and stuff. It was a blast. Oh my God. <laughs> they're still playing. Yeah. yeah they they're are. still, yeah. 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 What, what, what band do you guys remember that really changed your, your whole musical taste? You think? back in the day for me it was there's a couple i i saw the plimsolls uh I, I don't think i could drive i think mark goff took us down to la and we saw the plimsolls play and then there's x x is one of my favorite bands they're still going huh? oh yeah. yeah 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 the blasters x yeah. plimsolls dude the blasters played in kernville really yeah you can believe that wow. it was crazy man it was awesome 
I couldn't believe it. They were playing at this blues fest. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, yeah, keep going. Yeah. That's it. Uh, oh. Just, you know, bands like that. Uh, and I consider the stuff we play is, like Doug said, new wave, but stuff that you didn't hear on the radio. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. What about you, Doug? You're some uh, back so in the day. For me, I was kind of a hard rocker. I was into like you know the heavy guitar stuff and didn't really listen to a whole lot more and until like you know around that time you're talking about Devo and like Blondie even like when they oh, came yeah. out and had a little edge, it still had some guitar, yeah. but a little bit of keyboard synth stuff, which I slowly had to get used to. And then yeah. um, like Oingo Boingo. Oh my god, yeah. You know, and <laughs> mind boggling. You know, like Johnny said, the Plimp Souls kind of rock my world, and and then Joe Jackson, and then uh, Elvis Costello, just yeah. kind of like what you know, what what is this? Good yeah, stuff, and, and the Clash. Oh, for sure. You know, another another I just brought to my mind was that blew my mind was ACDC's Back in Black when that first album first came out. It was mm-hmm. like, oh my! I remember we were listening to it on an AM station in my mom's '69 uh, Cutlass Oldsmobile going to school. And my mom checked this out and she's like, that's horrible. <laughs> it's like, it's so good, mom. Back and back. Oh my gosh. What about you? Gosh, I wasn't into any of this music at all. Yeah. Um, before the funnels became the funnels, Tom uh, Atmore and Jimmy Richards and I uh, had like a more of a, you know, classic rock thing going. I think mm-hmm. we called ourselves some terrible classic rock name like Spectrum or something like that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and... So, uh, you know, we had we had actually played some gigs, and one day we were rehearsing uh, on a Saturday, and I come over, and those guys said, hey, we're going to learn some new songs. I'm like, all right, let's listen to them. They said, no, you don't need to listen to them. Just go like this. And we we learned three Ramon songs, and I never even listened to them. <laughs> and that's where it all began for me. Yeah. So then we started branching out from the Ramones to, you know, Joe Jackson and stuff. And, and I just, I just loved that stuff. Generation X, that was one yeah. of my favorites. Yeah. Um, uh, but you're talking about ACDC. I got to tell you a good story. Yeah. So I went to Trinity Lutheran Church here in town uh, that my grandfather built. And I played in the choir. And uh, so, um, one day, I think we, we played at the church service, and then uh, we, we were supposed to play both church services. So uh, in between church services, we would have, you know, Sunday school for high school people, you know. And um, the youth pastor, Dave Milgan, who was the music director, had told us beforehand, I got a really special uh, talk for you guys, you know. Um, we're going to listen to Bob Dylan's song. Uh, you've, you've, what's that song? You're going to have to... You're going to have to serve someone. You're going to have to serve someone. <laughs> and uh, he was like so stoked about this talk he was going to give us. Well, Kirk Paulson and Ricky Hahn snuck up in, the, in that room and put a an ACDC song in and queued it up to the right spot. So we, we go up to, there to have the, the little mini sermon. And Dave Milgan's talking about it. He finally says, all right, I just want you to close your eyes and listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> he hits play and he goes, I'm on the highway <laughs> to hell. Yeah. <laughs> just blew the whole sermon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, yeah, that stuff was so great. Those riffs, oh my gosh. Right? Just amazing. Yeah. Riffs. Yeah. The um, art of riffs. It's, what about these days? Do you guys have any bands that you guys are liking that are out there that you're listening to or anything that blows your mind or you guys go, hmm, not really? Or uh, For me, you- there's like, I, I don't really follow much new stuff, you yeah, know, yeah. so no, yeah. I can't say that there's any like new bands out there that blow me away, but um, I really like this band called Blackberry Smoke. Yeah. Um, they're kind of a southern country rock like kind of thing yeah. and they just they tear it up i've seen them live several times and they're just so good charlie stars their guitar player he's super good but it's a little obscure but that's kind of what i dig right now oh, cool johnny anything uh, i've been listening to uh it's a jelly roll station oh on in my truck so uh-huh. i like jelly roll yeah he's, yeah, yeah he's new he's i like him uh on that station, you get to hear Post Malone. I, I, there's some songs of his I like. Is there? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, just totally different music than I'm used to. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just opening up my brain. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. But uh, nothing really comes out. 
it's, you know, I, I still listen to all the old stuff. Yeah. You know, what about you, Doug? Yeah. Um, I listen to, uh, what's the sound? Is that what they're calling it? 89.9? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Uh, it's a college station, but uh, they're always playing different stuff. Part of the yeah. problem for me now is that my my brain's too full. I don't remember band names anymore <laughs> yeah. or names of songs. Right. Um, but yeah, there's so much new good music. And I kind of like the direction a lot of it's going right now because it's, a lot of it's just getting back to basics. And yeah. it's really organic and uh, yeah. not overproduced anymore. Yeah. Just just really raw, which, yeah. which I like. Um, mm-hmm. I like this band, uh, Mount Joy. They've got this uh, song, Lemon Tree. It, yeah. It's killer. Yeah. And the, the videos just anyways, yeah. Yeah. Th- there's definitely a lot of really good new music out there. Yeah. It just, it takes a little more work. You know, the radio doesn't play it anymore. Is there any bands out there like locally that you, you could suggest for folks to go listen to that, that you like? Shaky feeling. If you like yeah. jam music. Yeah. Yeah. I they're, love, they're I love great. shaky feeling. Yeah, absolutely. The stone flies. Oh, thanks buddy. <laughs> <laughs> right on. I can't wait right. to hear you guys. That'll be fun, man. Yeah. So if people listen out there, we we're playing next Wednesday, the 22nd yeah. um, at Tony's pizza. Um, both of our bands are playing, which is going to be amazing. Talk about a reunion. And um, <laughs> yep. it's uh, from six to 10, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, come on out and, and definitely check that out. I wanted to tell you guys, um, I recently went and saw um, foreigner. Oh my God. Unbelievable, man. Yeah. I mean, I think there's like one guy that's original in the band or whatever, but we were blown away. We saw him at the um, casino up in uh, San Inez, the two match casino. Unbelievable, man. They were so good. It was crazy. He's all, you guys remember when you guys used to stand up for a concert? (laughs) (laughs) And people were coming in in rockers. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was pretty funny, man. Yeah, I saw them recently, too. (laughs) Yeah, I saw them about four years ago. Yeah. But actually, Foreigner was my very, very first concert ever back in the day. Head head Games Tour. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. But they they still kill it. Yeah, totally. I recently went and saw... um, which was crazy down in uh, Los Angeles, this little tiny theater, uh, the zombies. Oh, wow. And I was blown away. Like uh, Rod Arden's one of my keyboard um, idols. And so I was actually right there. We could see him play and stuff. He's an old dude now. He's like, he's in his eighties or something, but I, they were, they sounded killer too, man. Still doing it, man. 80 years old. That's how we're going to be, right? I hope so. Yeah. Did for they sure. play the old Argent songs too, or just the zombie stuff? I think it was just all zombies. There's a yeah. couple songs I didn't, I didn't recognize. They probably could have been his, you know, yeah. but uh, yeah, pretty cool stuff. What about Joe? Um, your guys' keyboard player. What's his history since he, there, since he's not here and you guys can talk for him. Oh gosh. Hey, yeah. I've known Joe forever. We played soccer together. Okay. Um, Joe used to play at Charlie's. Who do, you, who do you play with? Uh, he used to play with Plato's Cat. Oh, okay. Um, I think I think he probably did some happy hours there also. Okay. Um, Joe and I had a band for a while, uh, gosh, around 2000, called None More One. Uh huh. And um, just doing Joe's originals. He's a great songwriter. He's a great mm-hmm. singer. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's also a great songwriter. Um, mm-hmm. Gosh, uh, I think we became musical friends because. When I was a uh, junior at Buena, I played with Frank Barajas at his senior year talent show. Oh, really? And Joe was playing, not with our band, but he was he was just doing some solo thing on the keyboard. and yeah. So we kind of reconnected then, and then we'd see each other over at uh, um, Charlie's all the time. Thank you. Uh, um, yeah, he's a great musician. But I think he's playing with Frank uh, at Boatyard tonight, right now. Oh, is he really? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, he he played in The Strangers with Frank, too, way back when, like oh, 1984. Right. Yeah. They used to play every Monday night at uh, Charlie's. We were Tuesday. You know what's crazy is um, uh, my old band, Lion Eyes, um, a very similar kind of a situation with like what you guys had was we, we were, were not very good musicians, um, and we basically learned how to play our instruments in Charlie's. <laughs> <laughs> We'd play, we'd play um, like in living rooms, you know, at house parties and stuff. And we'd, we'd have a nice, uh, t- lots of people would come and stuff. We'd have a nice following. And then 
<laughs> we were horrible. We didn't know what we were really doing, just kind of learning our instruments and stuff. And we'd play at Charlie's and we'd bring a crowd and the owner would be, hey, can you play here again? You know, it's out of, how yep. lucky is that, right? To be able to do something like that, right? Yep. <clears throat> and I, I feel bad because there's so many bands. I, you know, you're talking about Plato's Cat and um, <laughs> Frozen Beer. Uh, Watch out. Oh, yeah. This one's going out, too. Uh, but all these b different bands I've I've uh, heard of, but have never seen play. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a beer spill uh, here. Yeah, yeah. guy, you, you know yeah. I've I've spent a lot of time playing with your old bass player Bruce. Oh yeah, I know. You know, you told me yeah. We had that band, The Strength, way back when they used to play Charlie's. Yes, but yeah. we used to just sit in a garage together, just Bruce and I and Tim Carroll, just jamming. Those guys. That's how I learned how to just jam. You know. Yeah jam as a band as opposed to you know being able to improvise on your own um yeah i'm i i miss bruce i miss playing with him great bass player yeah he's amazing he's and, he and i just have this i don't know this weird connection, connection. yeah um, but, but yeah man yeah you guys got got uh him in the band yeah and you guys just it just man, went yeah just went off well he he was always talking about the the strength Strength, right? Yeah. Yeah. The strength and the extra strength horn section. Yeah. And was Brian playing in that? Yeah. Brian was in there. Oh, he was? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, guess, I guess there's hope for me after all. And Bobby. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, because I, I, all these different bands, man, I, you know, I heard of and, you know, playing at Charlie's, like, you know, all these different uh, Santa Barbara bands. I did get to see like Spencer play um, the other the other band from Santa Barbara. Toad the Wet Sprocket. Toad the Wet Sprocket come down there. Um, you know, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy used to play there. Yeah, Big I, Bad Voodoo Daddy. I think Daddy. I saw them the first night they played. It was just three of them. It was uh, yeah. Russ, Scotty, and Kurt. Yeah. And they had their, their voodoo faces on. and Yeah. And there's some great rock bands. You know, John Lombardo's band. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, something, something, for something for nothing. nothing yeah and their alter ego uh night diamond yeah 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 right i mean uh the talent there too was was unbelievable i rails i rails was, they were my favorite time. my favorite all time favorite charlie's yeah. band i rails yeah. they were amazing yeah see i never got to see them because we we're always playing somewhere i think yeah, Did they have a night there. I really, yeah. or, um, or they play like on Saturday. They would. They just played randomly, but they, yeah, yeah. They were always brought them in. I oh mean, yeah, yeah. They were super fun to dance to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where else did you guys play in Ventura? Like what clubs? Did you oh guys play God. Garfields? Did you play? Did you guys ever play those that place? We we played uh, McGinty's. When that was oh, around, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think we were the only ones to Wait, play at McGinty's. So McGinty's is that like off of? Um, is that by the uh, government center? Yeah, it, well, oh, it's okay. over by Trader Joe's. Oh, Trader Joe's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we. Oh, in the corner there was yeah. that McGinty's. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And we played uh, the Victoria Pub. Oh yeah. Uh, Coach's oh, Corner. Oh, Coach's Corner. Yeah. We. Where's that? It's it's where uh, next to Thirty One Flavors uh -huh. on Main Street. It's uh, now oh, yeah, it's yeah. now a Mong I think Mongolian restaurant. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you guys while you're playing? Anything? Any crazy stories? Well, for for Johnny and I, this was I think before Doug was in the band. We we were playing his sister's wedding, uh -huh. and um, we we're just supposed to play after you know we play play what we play well. Someone forgot to bring the first dance tape. Uh -huh. I don't remember who it was. And so they're they're like, hey, we don't have anything for them to dance to. Can you guys play a slow song? And we're like, no. No. We, <laughs> we don't know any slow songs. We don't know any of those. Uh-oh. So I was like, oh, crap, what are we going to do? Um, so we basically made up a song like th th three or four chords just on the spot. And Johnny just made up some words and we threw it together and really, I mean, no one knew the difference, but it must yeah. have been awful. But, yeah. but that, I it mean, worked. that was the most stressful thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know about anything crazy though. Maybe you guys, you guys play, did you ever play who songs? Remember who yeah. songs down at the beach? I think we played there. 
Yeah, it's a, I mean, that place? just just the smell was inspiring. Oh my god, yeah. I no other places. Uh, I'd say uh, one of my more memorable gigs was uh, the Battle of the Bands, summer of ni- 1982 at Huntington's. <laughs> when <laughs> wait, where was Huntington's at? Uh, Wagon Wheel. Oh, okay. Right yeah. by the Esplanade. Oh, oh, oh yeah. And uh, this was the second round. We'd already beaten my... I was there, man. Was that the Funnels? Yeah. Yes, okay. <laughs> we, we'd already beaten the Ray-Bans, good oh, friends the of Ray mine. Oh, the Ray-Bans, right, yeah. And so we, the second round, we got matched up with Sirith Ungle. I remember that, yeah. Did they win? Yeah. Those poor guys. <laughs> they were being... They came in... They had their um, their new albums they put out. They had their, their they just toured like China of all places yeah. and Mexico. And they were huge. And they were yeah, and they were being super nice to us and like I mean they knew that we were just these kids that were learning how to play and they're like yeah don't take this stuff seriously guys you know don't don't let it bother you just you know have fun and blah 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 you know and so uh, we played a set and they played a set and uh, it's funny Tom and Jimmy switched off playing bass and guitars and they, they, one of them broke the A string on the bass the first set. Of course, they had a spare. So then uh, the second set, they broke the other A string. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and had to play the rest of the night without the A string. Um, so that they were doing it by crowd vote. You got a ticket when you came in. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, you know, you went back and put it in, in the coffee can for who, whichever band you liked. Yeah. So I went back to, to count the tickets. And, I mean, they kicked our ass. They were a great band. And, you know, we were... We were fun, but we yeah. were, you know, marginal. We were a total garage band, and yeah. they were kind of polished. And so they uh, they empty out their can first, and this pile of tickets comes back. And I'm like, oh, shit, we're doomed, man. So then they open up our, our can, and a few tickets came out. And I was like, oh, they killed us. And then the guy taps the can real hard, and this freaking mountain of tickets came out. And we beat them, <laughs> like, I think it was 262 to 72. No way. I felt bad. We all, we all <laughs> felt bad. But, you know, I mean. Yeah, yeah. It was crowd vote. If it's it was my vote. talent, they would have kicked our asses. But Dude, I remember that. What year was that? 80. Summer 82. I think that was the end of the summer, like August or something. Wow. Yeah, I did go to that. 82, huh? Yeah. I think I was trying to sneak in there. We couldn't find a way to sneak in. Got <laughs> in somehow. Me and one of the Freeman brothers. Just pick one. And my brother Josh. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I think we were on the roof and we were trying to like find a way to get Seriously? in. Seriously? Yeah, and we climbed up there and we were looking for a thing. We saw the guys down there and uh, we couldn't pull it off though. That's, that sounds something like that uh, loan officer that we're all good friends with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't mention any names. Did you ever do Battle of the Bands? Yeah, we did uh, a couple of them. We did Battle of the Bands at the uh, the Ventura Theater. With uh, we were in the finals with Dichondra. Remember that band? Was this Lion Eyes? Yeah, Dichondra. Remember that? band? I hope you guys won. No, we we did. Oh my god, we lost that. Seriously? Yeah, Dichondra. Man, they were they were good. You remember that band? Mm-mm. No. Oh, I they were like that. they were they wore like costumes and. Guy, you know they were they were really good musicians, you know, but I don't. I think it was I think it was uh, judged by the guys from Heck Music, you know, not the uh, audience. So yeah, Bobby Bobby kind of flipped out on that one. <laughs> 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 he, he knows what he did, but we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll ask him next week. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah, we will. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. we had, we played a couple of those Battle of the Bands. Um, we had a big um, break, too, probably about, oh, man, maybe like 10 years, I think. And then... Uh, uh, Rock Cri- the Cure. Yeah. That was when you came back, right? Yeah, yeah. Kristen... Uh, Perry. Yeah, Kristen Perry, Bruce's wife, um, called all the band, all Lion Eyes up, and uh, called me up in Kernville. I hadn't played in 10 years. I was just concentrating on my business there and stuff. And she's, she told, she's all, oh, you know, I've got stage four breast cancer. I want to make, bring some awareness. You got, would you guys mind playing? Oh, all of us said, absolutely. <laughs> and so it was like a big reunion, of course, you know, oh, man. and super fun. God. Yeah. Rest in peace. Chris. Yeah. We miss you. Yeah. Oh, but um, she brought us all back together. She, yeah. You know what I mean? She, what, what was the process like? Was it just like riding a bike with you guys or? Yeah. Um, we actually um, stepped right back into it. Um, we hadn't seen each other for, 
for 10 years, I think. And then, yeah, it was, we started playing all our old songs. The horn section came back. Um, and uh, we actually actually hired a couple. Uh, I think we had a couple other horn players play with us. And David Spaziano came. Uh, remember David Spaziano? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he um, he passed away too. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys knew that. Yeah. Um, but he uh, um, he played, and then we had a whole bunch of people that were past members of Lion Eyes. They came and played. It was really cool. Yeah, that was such a fun night. Yeah, it was, was really it was really neat. Yeah, and just to be up in me and Bobby, we. You know, hadn't we hadn't played in front of an audience in a long time, and so that was like a big audience, and so um, you know we're running around on the stage and doing whatever we do, and and uh, we both went to the drum riser, and both of us were like, <gasps> oh my god, <laughs> and I couldn't breathe, man. We were like so out of shape. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah, good good stuff, man. Yeah, was, you guys killed it. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you guys for uh, being on my podcast. That was amazing. Um, let's. Uh, why don't you guys go ahead and tell when we're when we're playing and when you guys are playing after that. If you guys have any other gigs or where people can find any of your guys' stuff or anything like that, but go ahead. We don't have any stuff anywhere. Um, the three of us did re- record the summer of eighty. 80- Six or eighty-seven goldmine, baby at goldmine studio. Yeah. Oh wait, um, before we before we go there, I, that's one of the questions I wanted to ask you guys: Is anybody like um, writing any songs in the group at all? Like, would Joe for you guys or anything? Or you guys do any of that stuff? We've yeah. uh, have we've you ever always done covers? There yeah. was one time I think way back in eighty-five where we had an original song. We called it the punk song, um, but I don't think we've ever done anything else original. Yeah, just like. It's just covers. Does Joe write? Joe writes a little bit? Yeah. Joe writes yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah awesome. Writes a lot. I write a lot. Yeah, yeah. But I'm the drummer, so, you know, yeah. no, one, no one ever asked yeah. to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> I Dude, bet they just will play now. Beat and shut up. <laughs> yeah, man. So Tony's next week, huh? Yeah, Tony's. Wednesday the 22nd. Yeah. Um, well, this is coming out on Monday, so it'll be actually this Wednesday. Oh, this Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I will see you this that Wednesday. Was a radio yeah. faux pas. Six yeah. o'clock. <laughs> get there early. Yeah. Get a table. Yep. It's, it's like last it's time. Gonna, it's going to be packed. I think it's going to be packed. They're, yeah. I mean, based on you know what we're hearing, yeah. everyone's planning to go. So. Oh yeah, I, I got. I know gearing's coming down from uh, the Bay Area. A lot. Lots of people are going to be in town. And there's yeah, a killer so. headliner. <laughs> That's right. We're going to have a great time, you guys. <laughs> it's going to be so fun. Did you want to say anything, John? Uh, just that when Johnny knows no one is on uh, at six, and you guys are bringing up the rear air. Some, somewhere around eight. eight or so? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. So sounds get there like, early. Sounds like a good time. And and there's a rumor that um, somebody might be joining you? Yeah, Bobby Gallion uh, from Lion Eyes Days. He'll be there to sing a couple songs with uh, Stoneflies. All right. Nothing, yeah. nothing screams party yeah. like Bobby Gallion. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be so, awesome. Yeah, it should be, be a good time. Nice. Well, thanks again, you guys. Uh, what a pleasure. What an honor to have you guys on my podcast. Thank you. And I look Thank forward you. to playing with you guys. Thanks, buddy. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, talk guys. to you guys later. With everything going on in the world today, right now could be the best time ever to diversify your retirement savings with precious metals like gold and silver. I just bought some precious metals myself and I got them from the top rated company, Gold Co. They couldn't have made the process easier and their customer service was impeccable. Gold Co. has helped thousands of people just like you and me place over 2.5 billion in gold and silver. They're rated A plus by Better Business Bureau They've earned over 5,000 five-star reviews. They're a seven-time incorporated 5,000 winner. And that's just mentioning a few of their accomplishments. There's plenty more. Right now, for my listeners, they're offering up to $10,000 in bonus silver. You heard that right, up to $10,000 in bonus silver, but only while supplies last. Go to goldco.com slash guy to learn more. That's goldco.com slash guy. Diversify your savings with gold and silver today at goldco.com slash guy. It's a guy jeans podcast.